ओम भूर्भुव स्वहत सवितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देवस धीम धीरो यो न प्रचोदया तो शांति 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 कंटिन्ुंग द बुक ऑफ श्री साधु ओम आई start my second video all that he does is happiness for me sadhu om says about his guru that whatever maharshi ramana does that is all happiness for me the almighty sri ramana who exist within the heart of everyone who unfailingly helps me at all times and who cannot be banished from my mind even for a moment has brought me close to him only to take me as his slave therefore whatever he now does with me is only happiness for me how can anything that he does there after appear to me as something undesirable or painful leave it to him means i leave everything on my cruise wish and desires he knows the best of all leave it to him be calm believe him most of all then rest the mental stone explanatory explanatory paraphrase our sadguru self realized guru or guide sri ramana alone knows what is best for us therefore entrusting all our burdens and cares to him we should always remain peaceful and calm if we believe him more than we believe anyone or anything else knowing that he alone is the supreme all knowing all powerful and all loving reality then at that very moment we will attain that perfect peace in which the raging storm of thoughts will have come to end and forever so this this is is sort of surrender to the sadguru grace alone is of prime importance the ego is only a trivial entity besides it is unreal that is asat and powerless asakta it is a mere adjunct which rises and subsides therefore what foolishness it is to think the spiritual practice sadhana done by the strength of this ego will by itself best to the goal of life the supreme power of divine grace is not of any consequence and is not necessary in order for one to attain the goal not believing grace but thinking one's own individual effort alone to be of very great consequence is mere foolishness giving importance to one's own efforts instead of grace of the sadguru so that is all silly thing is not the unreal help which can unreal men render to another unreal men experienced by everyone in this world as real therefore o sadguru the embodiment of grace the soul reality is it impossible for you to save me from dispelling the unreal ego what doubt or wonder is there in your being able to help me thus a man or jiva is merely an unreal appearance and hence whatever help he may seem to render to another man is also unreal but when such unreal help rendered by an unreal man is experienced by everyone as real why should we doubt the ability of the sadguru 
who alone is truly real to render us the real help of destroying the unreal ego. Such help from the Sadhguru will certainly be experienced by us as more real than the help that we feel is rendered to us by others. Unless our Lord Sri Ramana, who is the form of God, himself bestows his divine grace, <coughs> who can by his own effort attain that heroic state of firmly abiding as self, having clearly known one consciousness other than the body to be the real I? What is worthy to be desired? The great wealth that exists in enlightened sages, jnanis, is only the subtle secret of how to be still, abiding in perfect peace as the mere thought-free existence consciousness I am. Therefore, how wretched it will be if one greedily desires to attain from them mere worldly pleasures, such gold, wealth or fame which will only make one suffer in delusion. Since pleasures are worthless, instead of eating the fruit that is in your hand, why do you desire to eat the unreal fruit which is seen in a mirror and which is merely a reflection of the fruit in your hand. Is the reflected fruit <clears throat> an object which can be eaten and give real enjoyment? Similarly, instead of drowning deep within the heart by keenly attending to self and thereby, and thereby enjoying the bliss of self which is ever shining there, why do you desire to enjoy the pleasures experienced through the five senses of this perishable body, which are merely an unreal reflection of the true happiness within you. Endeavor and result for those who seek and make effort to attain self, not only self, but also all other benefits will automatically be attained in full. But if one desires and makes effort to attain worldly objects, either through worldly endeavors or through spiritual practices, know that they will be attained only partially and to the extent of one's endeavor, and that self will not be attained at all. The goal. If we deeply ponder over the natural yearning of all living beings to remove their miseries through some means or other, it will be decidedly known that the sole aim for which the whole world is striving is only to remain always in perfect, <coughs> imperishable bliss. The people of the world still do not cease making efforts, the conclusion we must come to is that they have not yet attained perfect happiness, is it not? Whoever among the people has obtained complete containment and has therefore ceased making any kind of effort is truly one who has attained all that is to be attained. Which do you like? Having limited and transformed oneself into a body and having transformed the knowledge gathered through the five senses of that body into the world, one sees that world which is nothing other than one's own real self as objects which are other than oneself and one is thereby deluded with likes and dislikes for those objects. Such confusion alone is what is called the world illusion, Jagat Maya. The non-dual state in which you do not see yourself as the body and as the 
any objects of the world and in which you clearly know that which exists is only you who are one this alone is the state of god whichever you like is possible that is by your own unlimited perfect freedom or paripurna brahma svatantrata it is possible for you to remain in whichever one of these two states you like <clears throat> either in the state of delusion maya in which you are deluded by seeing yourself as many or in the state of god in which you realize yourself to be the one non dual reality the nature of desire when one's own inexpressible power one image imagine really sees the one real self as many objects the soul work and god and thinks oneself to be one among those objects then one's own natural self love which transcends thought will assume the form of a thought and will appear to oneself the individual who imagines thus as desire for those objects which are seemingly other than oneself <coughs> what is called love is truly nothing but the non dual love that is ananya priya which the real self has for itself in the state in which it alone exists and shines and what is called desire is nothing but the dual love ananya priya which springs towards other objects which are truly not other than self in the state in which the one real self seems to be many objects therefore the only way to put an end to desire is for one by means of one's own perfect freedom brahma svatantrata <clears throat> to use one's own inexpressible power to see self as one and not as many in order to see self thus as one as it ever really is one must cease attending to the many objects which seem to be other than oneself and must instead attend only to the first person singular feeling i of all things <clears throat> is not oneself the most beloved when one limits oneself by imagining oneself to be a body one sees all these things the world and god which are truly nothing but one's own self as objects other than oneself and hence one has desire for those objects that desire is only a distorted form of the true self love that is one's own very nature the love which one always has for oneself is not a thought that supreme love is one's own real self that is existence consciousness bliss sat chit ananda when a wrong knowledge rises in the form of a thought whereby one mistakenly sees the oneself as many objects which are seemingly other than oneself even the true self love will become a petty thought in the form of desire when self love which is not a thought forsakes its own real nature of mere being and springs towards other things in the form of desires it becomes ever moving thoughts when love remains as the thought free love for self instead of becoming thoughts in the form of desires for other things that state of self abidance is true tapas austerities or severe spiritual discipline <clears throat> this original love for self which has now become the three desires will cease to assume the form of thoughts and will remain as a supreme bliss only by means of self realization the state in which one sees all the five elements and the entire world 
constituted by those elements as not other than oneself. The three basic human desires are the desire for relationship, that is the desire for relatives, wife, husband, children, friends or any kind of human relationship, whether sensual, emotional or otherwise. Second, the desire for possessions in any form whatsoever. And third, the desire for praise, that is the desire for fame, honor, esteem or any kind of appreciation from others. The reason for classifying <coughs> these three desires is explained in more detail in verses 102 to 109 of this text. The love for happiness is only the love for self, because self alone is happiness. But if one imagines that this world, which is nothing but self, is something other than oneself, then on account of self-love, the objects of the world will seem to be objects of pleasure and hence the love for that self which appears as objects other than oneself will assume the form of desire. This is the great wrong. When the true knowledge dawns that everything is only I, then the extroverted love which desirously springs towards other objects will remain pervading everywhere in the form of mere being and will no longer spring towards anything else. The love that thus remains as mere being, having ceased to move in the form of thoughts alone, is Shiva who is Self. Since Self is happiness itself, so long as one sees other things, which are in truth only Self, but whose names and forms are a mere appearance, how can one not think that those other things are pleasurable? This alone is the reason why all living beings, beginning with celestial beings and including man and all other creatures, are drowning and burning in the great fire of desire for external objects. When our true nature of mere being is transformed into the nature of rising as an ego, know that the three real aspects of our nature, namely existence, consciousness and bliss, will seemingly become their opposites, namely non-existence, ignorance and misery, and will thus assume the form of dyads, the pair of opposites. Just as a single ray of white light becomes seven different colors when it passes through a prism, so the single and undivided existence consciousness I am is seemingly diffracted into the triads, the triputis or three factors of objective knowledge named the, namely the knower, the act of knowing and the objects known when it passes through the petty senses. When we limit our true nature of undivided existence, consciousness, bliss by wrongly accepting an insignificant body to be I, Desire arises for those objects of the world that are favorable to this limited I, and aversion arises for those objects which are not favorable to it. This desire and aversion are a twofold reflected shadow of our real nature, which is bliss or love priya. Though in the realm of cause and effect happiness and love appear to be two different things, 
each being the cause of the other in the state of self knowledge they are realized to be one and the same that is why existence consciousness bliss that is sat chit ananda is alternatively known as being luminosity and love asti bhati priya when our nature to be is mistaken as a nature to be rise the bliss aspect of our nature appears as the dyad pleasure and pain which automatically gives rise to desire and aversion or likes and dislikes the likes and dislikes are a two fold reflection of the bliss or love aspect of our true nature compare with letters from sri ramanasramam of april 11 1946 also with sri bhagwan tamil translation of drik drishya viveka likes and dislikes are a dyad which arises as a reflection of bliss ananda existence and non existence are two fold appearance assumed by the ever indestructible existence sat knowledge and ignorance are a dyad which arises as a reflection of consciousness chit know this truth by abiding as self which is existence consciousness bliss only by the experience of self knowledge will all desires be burned and destroyed in such a manner that they can never again revive nobody has ever overcome the power of desire merely by fighting and struggling for any number of years against the wandering nature of the five senses know that this indeed is the reason why our father guru ramana always gave the advice know yourself and unfailingly taught the path of self inquiry as the most powerful practice sadhana and as the only weapon to destroy all the desires existing within us the three desires in sanskrit they classify the desire for wife son and wealth as the three desires were as in tamil they classify the desire for land women and gold as the desires but on scrutiny these are found to be not three desires but only two let me say what are really the three desires born out of the darkness of ignorance listen the three desires classified in sanskrit and the three classified in tamil can be each be reduced to two desires namely loving relationships and material possessions as explained in the next verse the desire that we have for wife or woman and desire for son can be taken as one desire namely the desire for relationship likewise the desire for gold the desire for wealth and the desire for land can be taken as one desire namely the desire for material possessions what then is the third of the three desires it is only the evil desire for praise fame honor appreciation or recognition which makes one hanker after the proud and vain glory of feeling i have renounced the desire for all these four wife son land and gold so up to here we have covered 40 aphorisms now 41 i will name 
my, um, this pronounce every uh, stranger's name. That is better. 41. The desire for loving relationships, the desire for material possessions, and the desire for honor are the unaccept uh, unacceptable three desires. More than the first two desires, the third one is very dangerous. Know that the non-rising of the ego, which rises either with the feeling I am having this particular desire or with the feeling I have renounced this particular desire, is alone true renunciation. 42nd. Even after renouncing with a little discrimination, love for relationships and love for material possessions, many wise people become a prey to this desire for name and fame, which has the power to destroy their discrimination. Therefore, know that true renunciation is only the state in which the ego I does not rise having renounce the liking to enjoy even the honor that results from the renouncing of relatives and possessions. 43 stanza which Wise people say that the desire that one should become an object of honor is indeed despicable. Why? The joy which results from that honor is experienced by oneself, is it not? Therefore, even the desire for that honor is only selfishness. As the state that is devoid of the ego which feels I and me is along the state that is acceptable to sages. When the sage through Valluvar sang in verse 20, uh, 236 of 3, Tirukural, if you take birth, take birth with him. For those without fame, not taking birth is better than taking birth. He was addressing only those people who desire to take birth in this world and not spiritual aspirants who have no desire for taking birth. 44th Stranger Those who experience the sufferings that result from desire for relationships and desire for material possessions will finally one day or other become disgusted with these desires and renounce them. But the desire for honor that comes to one is a very treacherous delusion, maya, that is skillful in concealing and not showing the dangerous harm that lies in itself. Therefore, people will find more and more joy in this desire for power and honor and will not shrink from it. When the mind experiences intense suffering due to the diseases which result from the desire for women or due to the enmity which result from the desire for sons, it will sooner or later automatically gain a liking to renounce them. Similar, similarly, on account of the endless misery that results from having desire for gold, land and wealth, the mind will sooner or later automatically gain a liking to renounce such possessions. Thus, desire for relationships and material possessions and will one day or other reveal the dangerous harm that lies in themselves. But when desire for honor, name and fame is experienced more and more, it will make the mind feel only a delusion of joy and hence the dangerous harm that lies hidden in it cannot easily be discerned by the mind. That is why Sri Bhagwan warns us in verse 37 of supplementary reality in 40 verses. 
I will give one or two videos on this uh, 40 verses of reality and supplement to reality in 40 verses. That is Ulladu Narpadu Anubandham. First is Ulladu Narpadu and the supplement to reality in 40 verses that is Ulladu Narpadu Anubandham. Even though all the worlds have been renounced as mere straw and even though all the scriptures have been mastered for those who have come under the sway of the wicked harlot called praise, honor, recognition or appreciation, ah, to escape from slavery to her is indeed very difficult. 45th verse If a person who thinks I, who am exalted in many ways, am a separate individual, my fame is flourishing among many people, pauses and considers carefully about himself, inquiring who am I. This separate individual, his ego will perish and thus he will conquer and destroy all desire along with its root. 46th verse Trying to destroy the three desires while restraining the ego, the feeling, I am this body, which is the root cause of all rising is utter foolishness. Just like trying to cross a river riding upon a crocodile as a raft. The destruction of the ego, the original sin, is along the destruction of the threefold fire of desire. Therefore, in order to destroy all the three desires, the only way is to destroy oneself by inquiring, Who am I who have these desires? <coughs> The way to attain good qualities. 47 verse. If one wishes to attain all the elevated and pure qualities, sattva gunas, by training the mind, one will certainly fail in one's attempts, no matter how long one may try. But if one takes to the practice of self-attention, which will destroy the mind and if one there, thereby transcends the three ordinary qualities purity that is sattva activity rajas and inertia tamas the true quality of abiding steadfastly as the reality satguna will automatically shine forth and flourish in one and in the outlook of others, one will then appear to be endowed with all pure sattvic qualities. 48th verse If ordinary people strenuously practice for many aeons without wasting even a moment, they may develop a few of the good qualities which are gracefully brimming over and pouring forth from one who has attained the treasure of self-knowledge and who has thereby transcended the qualities. Yet, if any trivial test come their way for the ordinary people, they will fail to remain established in those qualities. 49th verse <clears throat> Good qualities and bad qualities are not qualities given by God but are only qualities born of the mind that is they are the expanded form of the tendencies that is vasanas which one has accumulated in one's mind through one's own free will and acts 
the empty space of self knowledge that is completely devoid of all good and bad tendency is alone what is called sat guna <sighs> 50 a stanza those fortunate people who have attained a perfect guru will not toil in vain to cultivate good qualities in the mind they will only cultivate the practice of self inquiry which will draw the mind within and destroy it and thereby they will not allow the mind to rise in the form of thoughts to attain the unequaled and unsurpassed nature of abiding eternally as self there is no way other than the practice of making the mind humbly subside through devotion and enquiry 50b in the life of a sage gyani who has <clears throat> transcended the qualities the actions of his body which happen spontaneously and without his thinking will sometimes make it appear as if he is lacking good qualities however such actions appear to be real only because of the imagination in the mind of the ignorant agyani who sees who sees them and hence they are merely a deceptive reflection of his own impure mind 50 c <clears throat> those who have bad qualities in them will see only bad qualities in the says if one could see one's own defects as clearly as one sees the defects of the others who are in front of one then would any evil befall one satsanga association with the real 51 our association sangha with the reality sat alone is true sat sangha since self alone is the reality abiding in the self alone is the best sat sangha conscious company or association moreover <clears throat> since those great aspirant sadhus who have realized the self the reality cannot be other than self they to are the reality itself therefore approach such self realized ones sadhus and remain with them as their devoted slave <laughs> refer to the talks with ramana maharshi page 242 and day by day with bhagwan page 236 to see where sri bhagwan has expressed the ideas given in this verse i'll talk about all these books 52nd verse if you do not have the power to abide in self the reality remain with love in the constant company of sadhus who have known the reality if you do not have even the good fortune to be in their company have contact at least with the teachings of such sadhus by constantly studying those books that contain the words works they have spoken studying such books is also satsanga conscious association <clears throat> what are those books the study of which is to be considered as the satsanga they are only those books that will clearly impress upon you self alone is the reality so always abide in self in order to abide in self practice only self inquiry and do not follow any other path practice self inquiry now itself turn and dive 
within 54th verse if in the name of conscious association satsanga you gather together all kinds of people said holy gathering will consist only of a crowd of people who are skilled in oratory or who have studied innumerable books or who have mastered the 64 mundane arts apravidyas all of which are unreal products of the mind power of imagination reject all such gatherings knowing that they are not at all true conscious company satsanga 55th verse rather than associating with such people thinking their company to be satsanga it is better for you to remain alone without associating with anyone because such solitude or non association will help you at least gradually to gain more and more detachment 56 for those who have been blessed with the rare and great good fortune of gaining true satsanga all the heaps of gold in the seven worlds cannot be compared with that treasure called satsanga because by such satsanga they will cross the ocean of ignorance again which is so difficult to cross and thus they will attain in this very life the unequaled state of liberation which is so difficult to attain compare verse 2 of supplement to reality in 40 verses in which Sri Bhagwan says that supreme state of liberation that is praised by all the scriptures and that is attained here in this very life by the clear inquiry that arises in the heart when one gains association with a sage is impossible to attain by listening to preachers by studying and learning the meaning of the scriptures by doing virtuous de deeds or by any other means 57 wars though your mind lacks the strength of discrimination or dispassion viveka and vairagya require to withdraw itself from the false attraction of the pleasures of this unreal world your mind will naturally and spontaneously become mature to the extent to which you humbly and lovingly come very close and associate with enlightened sages, jnanis who abide as the reality that is Satya. 58th verse If you ask how, just as even a fresh plantain tree will become dry and catch fire when it comes in close proximity to a raging forest fire so the minds of those who associate with jnanis will unknown to themselves be made by that association association to great love to attend to and abide in self 59th verse when we gain association with a person who knows and abide as the reality called a Sat Purusha, we will be able to know very clearly that real devotion to God and steadfast discrimination between the eternal and the ephemeral are steadily rising up and increasing in our hearts automatically and without our own effort. 60th verse <clears throat> we should not believe that we have by our own efforts and practice sadhana brought about the rising of such pure devotion and clear discrimination 
that we are thus able to experience in our hearts. This true devotion and discrimination are spontaneously and naturally kindled in our hearts, not by our own efforts, but only by the power of grace of that Satpurusha who is living closely to us and who appears as if is he is someone other than us. 61st verse Just like a mother who feeds her sleeping child even without the child knowing that he is being fed, the grace of the Satpursa enters our hearts in a manner that cannot be known by us even if we have the most subtle and powerful of intellects and thereby his grace reforms us and br brings about the destruction of our mind. His grace is beyond all limits and cannot be caused by anyone. 62nd verse Having understood the greatness of satsanga which is revealed by the true words uttered by our Sadguru Sri Ramana who is the Lord of the universe when the excellent cool southern breeze itself is blowing say what is the use of holding a hand pen let us live taking refuge in Arunachala, the hill of Satsanga. Hand fan, refer to to reality in 40 verses, verse 3. Sri Bhagwan has revealed that Arunachala is the reality, Sat itself, embodied in the visible and tangible form of a hill. Therefore, Taking refuge at the feet of Arunachala is the highest form of conscious association, satsanga, that is available on the physical plane. And thinking of Arunachala with love is the highest form of satsanga that is available on the mental plane. The greatness of Sri Arunachala Pardakshina. 63rd verse. Only those who abide firmly in the reality are sages, sadhus. Those pure sages are not other than self, whose nature is reality, consciousness, bliss, sat, chit, ananda. Knowing the truth and Arunachala is manifest here as the peerless gross form of the reality, remain here in order to associate with the reality. There is no form of external consciousness, company, satsanga, superior to that of residing near and doing pardakshina, Circumambulation around Arunachala. 64th verse. If due to its wavering nature, one's mind is confounded and bewildered, being unable to cling fast to the practice of self-abidance or to the path of devotion or to the eightfold path of Raja Yoga, and if one is therefore seeking some good form of austere, austere, austere spiritual practice, tapas as an effective and easy path along which he can make further effort, let him repeatedly and perseveringly come round this divine hill Arunachala. 65th Verse. Any kind of action, karma is a dual activity, dvaita virati, that cast one further and further away from self. 
the center of all. But unlike all other actions, karma, doing pardakshana or circumambulating around Aruna is a dual activity that does not cast one away from self. The son of true knowledge therefore do this. Having the peak of Arunachala as the center, however much one may do pardakshana around it, one is never going away from that center. Hence, since pardakshana keeps one ever in close association with the center, unlike other activities which cast one away from the center, it is described here as a dual activity which does not cast one away. If a cow that is tied by a long tether to a peg fixed in the ground grazes around and round that peg, it does not notice that the length of its leather is thereby decreasing as it becomes more and more twisted around the peg. Similarly, consider how can your mind notice that its outward going tendencies are gradually, degradually, decreasing and subsiding due to your coming round Arunachala. When the cow goes round the peg more and more, the length of its tether will finally be reduced to nothing, whereupon the cow will be brought to a standstill. Being unable to move away from the peg, similarly, the mind of a devotee who with love does pardakshina around Arunachala, Annamalai, which is self, the exalted space of true knowledge, will finally be brought to a standstill with its attention fixed motionlessly upon the self, all its mental tendencies, vasanas having subsided completely. The fact, 68th verse, the fact that the mind of a devotee who does pardakshina around Arunachala will attain great love to abide attending to self within is a great truth clearly known by direct experience. Arunachala Annamlai is the blazing fire of jnana which burns to ashes all the desires that give rise to future births. 69th verse When iron is rubbed against a magnet, the magnet turns the atoms of that iron which were scattered and facing in many directions and sets them all on a north-south alignment by thus realigning the atoms in an ordinary manner the magnet transforms the iron into a magnet like itself similarly arunachala the magnet which is space of supreme self consciousness turns the mind of a devotee who does pardakshana around it to face self words and thereby transforms into self just as the magnetic quality of iron which is its true nature does not reveal itself so long as the atoms of iron are scattered facing in many directions. So self, which is the true nature of the mind, does not reveal 
itself so long as the mind is scattered outwards in many directions by worldly desires and just as the true nature of iron reveals itself when it is rubbed against a magnet so the true nature of the mind reveals itself when the devotee does pradakshina around a around arunachala the magnet of self consciousness 70th verse the story of how king vajranga the pandyan finally attained liberation mukti having lost all dampness in the form of his desires and attachments and having gained perfect purity of mind even though in the bargaining he had started to do pradakshina of um, arunachala anamlai in order to fulfill his selfish desire can be cited as testimony for what has been said above japa that is repetition of mantras 71st verse the benefit in repeating a holy name of god is not only to gain one pointedness of mind but is to surrender oneself to god to such an extent that one's heart melts and dissolves with ever bringing love for him while repeating his name 72 thinking once of the name of god with a steady one pointed mind is more valuable than doing a 1000 2000 or crores of repetitions with a wandering mind but calling intently upon god even once with a mind surging with love for him is far superior even to doing a million crores of japa with a one pointed mind very important information just i repeat it once more this is very very important thinking once of the name of god with a steady one pointed mind is more valuable than doing a thousand thousand or crores of repetitions japa with a wandering mind but calling intently upon god even once with a mind surging with love for him is far superior even to doing a million crore of japa with a one pointed mind wonderful words so it is not the quantity it is the quality which matters how many times we repeat the name of god is not important but how do we repeat it that is important not how many times but how the process and the process here is with one pointedness of mind mind is completely should be concentrated only on the name of god or self so this is the most important point to be remembered 73rd 
while doing a repetition japa of the name of god there is one thing called love which is to be mingled with it if one knows correctly the way to do japa uniting love with the name of god the result attained by that japa will be not only one point tedness of mind that japa will bestow upon one the deathless state of union with god 74th verse uniting love